It's Maisie from Sholo Public Library, and we are back today in the Sholo TV studio bringing you another new show, Healthy Cooking with Sholo Public Library. I'm going to be here some of the time. There might be somebody else here, so I'm going to let our host introduce himself to you guys. Hello, my name is William Crawford. I'm the culinary arts teacher at Sholo High School. Uh, I commonly go by the nickname of Chef Smokin' Bill. Uh, we're going to be making tamalitos today. Uh, let's introduce some things that we've done ahead of time to get prepared for this. One of them was we have our corn husks here. Oops, I don't want to dump And them. we pre-soaked <laughs> them in water so that they're uh, pliable and easy to work with. Otherwise, they can be very stiff and they don't want to fold up like they're supposed to. Um, we have our other ingredients. We've got our masa, we've got some kosher salt, some baking soda, a bell pepper, a, li a lime, some cilantro, some water, and we're going to be putting all of these together making our tamalitos. We're going to start out with our cilantro. Now, there's a big bunch of that's cilantro. That's a big bunch of cilantro. <laughs> I don't know that I'm going to be using all of it. Um, cilantro is a really, really strong herb, and people have a tendency to use too much, and the cilantro then overpowers the food. So we're just going to take off about a third of it here, give the other part of it back to Maisie, and she can do whatever she wants to do with it. Um, we want to coarsely chop the cilantro. Um, I'm going to cut off the little stems at the end. I don't really like the little stems. I'm not a big fan of them. So we're going to cut them off at the end. Get rid of them. And we are going to coarsely chop our cilantro. Try not to cut your fingers off while you're doing this. Do you like cilantro or does it taste weird to you? Um, because doesn't that happen to some people where it tastes strange? Yeah, there are people that think it tastes like soap. Ugh. And um, <laughs> they say it's hereditary. I think part of it's the fact that so many people, when they make stuff, they don't realize how strong cilantro is. Mm -hmm. And they put mm -hmm. so much of it in their food. You can smell it just what I'm cutting it right here. It smells really good. I love it's, cilantro. It smells really good, but it's kind of overpowering all the other senses. I mean, I can't smell anything but cilantro. And that's not necessarily why I like stuff. So, But I think people use it too much. It's like rosemary in Italian food. Mm -hmm. Rosemary in Italian food, people have a tendency to use way too much of it, and it overpowers the Italian food. I'm going to leave it on the cutting board because we really don't need the cutting board for anything else. We're going to set that off to the side. Um, we are going to take our lime again. If you want to juice uh, citrus fruit, it's easier if you crush it on a table. It starts the juicing process, makes it so it's easier to juice when you're done. I do need my cutting board back. I gotta cut okay. this in half. I will get the cilantro off here and I will hang on to it for safekeeping. For safekeeping. Or a snack, no. <laughs> so we're going to continue to kind of press this down. Uh, this is, again, something else you could do early if you wanted to. Um, they could also use, like, reg like, lime juice that's already juiced. Yeah, they it could. It doesn't have the same flavor, though. They could buy the bottle of lime juice. Uh, the problem with buying a bottle of lime juice, you don't get any of the pulp. Mm. So maybe you want some of that pulp in it. I think that's more of a personal thing. So we have our limes ready. We got some Monterey Jack cheese. We have a bowl here. It calls for two ounces of Monterey Jack cheese. Um, we're going to use a little more than two ounces simply because we like cheese. We decided two ounces was not enough when we were reading the recipe, but that's what it actually says. This recipe makes 10 tamalitos, so 10 bite-sized tamales. And we'll have the recipe, um, hopefully it'll be showing on the screen while you're watching, and then we'll also have 
a piece of cheese just flew off. Did you guys see that? So um, we'll have the recipes showing on the screen and then we'll also um, have the recipes up on the Sholo Public Library Facebook page because when this video is going out initially, you guys are gonna be able to come to the library and pick up little kits to um, with all the stuff in it to take it home and make it while you're watching the video like a real cooking show. So we'll have all this information that's on there. All right, we've got four ounces of it grated here. We're gonna pass it off to Maisie and let her finish it. Uh, we do need to make mention of this is a grater. It is sharp, it can cut you. So please be aware, take any of this, these things very, very seriously. You can get hurt quite bad if you're not being careful. You always wanna be careful around sharp equipment and, and kitchen equipment in general. Okay, so we've done our cilantro. We, we're gonna juice these as we need to. I just, we forgot to get a bowl to put them in, so we're just gonna leave them out for now. Grate the cheese. We need a third of a bell pepper. We found the world's biggest bell pepper, you guys. And what we're gonna do with our bell pepper, is we're only gonna use about a third of it. And we're gonna make sure we don't have any of the seeds. We're gonna get rid of any of these spine pieces. Uh, the seeds are not hot because it's a bell pepper, but they can actually, some people don't like the texture of a seed and they just don't want them in their food. Uh, by the way, on chilies and regular peppers, seeds are where a lot of the heat's at. So if you like the flavor of certain peppers, but you don't like the heat, take the seeds and the spines out and they mm -hmm. won't be as hot. Well, and the red bell pepper is gonna look really pretty when we bite into the tamales with the cilantro. It's gonna look like Christmas, you guys. That still seems like a lot of pepper. It does. But they're gonna taste good when they're done. Okay. There's the rest of the cheese in case we change our minds about how much we want. And if you guys are making these at home too, you might be able to put maybe some meat in there. Like when my mom makes tamales, she makes this stuff in the crock pot that has chicken and cilantro and tomatoes and stuff and she cooks it in there and she puts those in hers. So you can probably experiment with different fillings depending on what you wanna do, but they'll just be smaller tamales instead of full size ones. You'll just get a little, like a little pocket tamale. I like that phrase. Pocket tamales. Pocket tamales. Because that's what it is. It's in a little corn husk pocket. And we'll tie them up like a little presents. Put them under the tree. Mm-hmm. No. Christmas colors. It looks like <laughs> Christmas, doesn't it? Put them under the tree. <laughs> okay, so we have our peppers. We're going to combine these with the grated cheese. Well, we're going to set them to the side right, for now. and we'll combine. We'll combine later on. In a, in a big mixing bowl, you're gonna have our one cup of masa. Which we pre-measured. We pre-measured a lot of these already. Um, our salt, our kosher salt. Now, if you're not a fan of kosher salt, just use regular salt. Uh, some people have gone to where they're now using sea salt and things like that. Uh, they do all have different flavors. Um, be aware that not all salt is salt. Then we also put some baking powder in there. Yeah, we put three quarters of a teaspoon of salt and three quarters of a teaspoon of baking powder. Now this is just something I do. Okay, I don't, just when I was trained to be a chef, they always had me mix my dry ingredients together. That way you don't have a clump of salt or a clump of baking soda or something like that. It's just me. It's not something that you have to do. It's just something I do, okay? Half a cup of water, pour it in there. Now, 
Now, a trick you can do is either use a strainer, oh, we have one. which we have one down here. We have a strainer that you can just squeeze these through. And that way you can keep out the seeds. This is going to give our masa a really good flavor. It's going to be tangy. Or the way I was shown to do it was to just squeeze it in my hand and let it go through my fingers and just get the seeds out that way. Um, I was taught to do it this way because the chef that taught me was like, the more dishes you make, the more you got to clean. clean. <laughs> and he was not a big fan of cleaning. He was like, I hate cleaning up when I'm done. So he I, just used his hands a lot. I concur. I concur. Okay. Less dishes. So we're going to stir this up. The other thing we did ahead of time was we got our butter out. Here we're using challenge butter. I don't think it matters, it just needs to be unsalted. Uh, we got it out, you can see it's soft. I can squeeze it with my hand. You want it unsalted. I'm just mixing this up until I get all the water in mixed with, with the masa. And then once we put the butter in, it's going to look like dough. Yep, we are creating what we call now is pea-sized uh, bread product or something of that nature. Um, if you're making biscuits, pie dough, you do the same thing with it. You get it to a certain point and you make pea-sized particles. I'll show you here in just a second what it should look like. You'll see that it's just a bunch of pea-sized particles. Some people will do this backwards when you make like biscuit dough. You'll use the butter in with the masa or with the flour. But either way, you want it to look about like that. That looks right. We're gonna take our butter. We only need half a cube. Here, I can cut it up. So she's gonna cut it in half for me. There we go. In our pot, we already have some water. We're gonna, we already have the water. We've got a steaming tray. It looks like this, so the steam can come through. Uh, we've got something in the bottom of it so that it sit, doesn't sit in the water. Otherwise, your tamales will sit in the water, and we don't want the tamales sitting in the water. We want them being above the water, so they're just being steamed. And normally when you make tamales, or I should say traditionally when you make tamales, you make them with lard or shortening. Yes. But this is healthy cooking, you guys. So we're using butter. So if you normally make them with something else and you want to do that, you just do you. That's kind of the fun thing about recipes. Once you learn to use a recipe, you can also then figure out how to alter it and make it work the way you like it. You might like certain things in certain foods. Um, same thing with, with different oils. If a recipe calls for vegetable oil, so to speak, um, you might want to try canola oil or some other oil. All of the oils, again, all have a different flavor. And if you ever get to high school and decide you want to take culinary arts, we do have part of our lessons where we actually taste all of them. Ooh, taste all cool. the oils, all the vinegars, all the different herbs, spices. 
so that they can get so the students can get an idea about what they what they're like normally that's a good idea and I then thought about that well then they can actually start realizing you know what I, I prefer peanut oil over whatever mm -hmm. um, always be aware all of our recipes we are being extremely allergy conscious we're trying to make sure this is one where maybe somebody's lactose intolerant they won't want to use the butter or they've got a dairy allergy they may have to stay away from the butter but whenever you're cooking especially for people that aren't part of your family you have to become allergy conscious because somebody can have allergies really really bad and just using the wrong food products you can make somebody really really sick now I mixed it with a spoon at first the spoon wants to keep breaking it apart and I'll show you what it should look like here in a minute and then we'll be ready to make the tamalitos pocket tamales yeah that's what we're gonna call them they're not tamalitos <laughs> anymore they're pocket Macy's tamales. giving them a new name they're pocket tamales <laughs> And we can do that. That way we can say, look, we've patented it. That's it's copyrighted. true. It's ours. Pocket it's ours. tamales. <laughs> <laughs> we have pocket tamales. So we'll have the dough ready, and then we're going to have a bowl that we'll show you. I have to get another bowl, but we'll get another bowl, and we'll put the mixture that's going to go inside the masa in there so you guys can see it. And then we're going to show you how you put them together after we've gotten it all combined, and then they're going to cook, and we'll talk about how long they have to cook for. Trying to see what temperature they want these cooked at. It says boiling, but high heat. Okay. So here's your dough. It's kind of what it should look like. Now, if I was in my kitchen at school, I would actually be having a scale right here. And you'd weigh, and I'd each, weigh each one, one of them out because <laughs> they all have to be exactly the same size. We're just going to make them into 10 round balls. Okay. Where we're going to try anyway. Okay. So. And I'm going to sneak down here and grab a bowl for our mixture real quick so that we can mix it up. So the mixture, remember, was the cheese which will go in there. Make sure we get it all out of there. And we're gonna put our peppers in here, our third of our pepper in here. It is gonna look like Christmas, you guys, once it's all mixed up. And it's just the grated cheese and the peppers. Okay. What's the cilantro for? I'm not sure yet. Oh. Maybe it was just to give us something to do. <laughs> <laughs> because you know. they would never do that on a real fake cooking show. <laughs> on a real fake cooking show? <laughs> okay, and I'm going to give it a toss, the cheese and the peppers. So they're going to be cheesy, but they're going to be a little bit spicy, too. No, nope, there's no heat to spell peppers. I think they're kind of spicy. On the, on the capsation scale, uh -huh. the Scoville scale, they're actually listed as zero. Really? Yeah, they have no heat to them. Wow. Okay, so this is our mixture. So this was the cheese and the peppers that we cut up. So that's gonna be what's gonna go inside of the husk with the masa. It's gonna go right in there. So I'm gonna put that to the side. We have to make 10? Yeah, I think we're gonna have to shrink them. Oh, okay, because they're a little bit too big? Yeah, we're at six. Oh, well. Maybe? No, we're not gonna make it? Eight, nine? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We gotta get rid of some off of two of them? Yeah. We're make another? We're gonna make a monster masa ball. Okay. Trying to make them all the same size. That way that we kinda get even. Amounts of masa so they cook evenly. Okay. All right, so we have 10 of them now. Two, okay. four, six, eight, ten. 10. Okay, we're gonna put that away. Okay. 
So we have our husks. We've got some string here to tie them. And I'll just be perfectly honest, this is new to me. I don't ever tie tamale husks, but... And every time I make them, I just tie them with the husks. You can kind of shred yeah. them and tie them. So you can experiment. So we're gonna take, take our a husk. So these are damp from being in the water, which makes them more malleable. Here's our filling right there, okay. And it says to flatten them down to where they're about a half inch thick. I might go a little smaller, a little thinner. Let's them cook a little faster. But they're not very big. I'll, I'll show you how big they are here in a second. We are putting together our pocket tamales. So we have the filling, we have the masa in our husks, and we're gonna put them together. This is gonna make 10 little pocket tamales. So you take your mixture. We added a little cilantro to it to give it a little color. Because we discovered so. that it was just for garnish, which we do not find acceptable. <laughs> So you put that in there. How much did you put? Okay. About a tenth of it. Okay. That way it makes ten. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. So you fold the edges in, the long sides get folded in. So the long side gets folded across. And then the other long side. Like then that. Then you fold the short sides up. So it makes this. Now normally I would just put them in the pan upside down, but I can see why they're not wanting us to do it this way. Yeah, they actually now pop the, open. the stuff is in there. Yeah, I think we gotta tie so them let me shut. Get her a string. Thank you. And it says you're supposed to tie it like a present. Isn't that what the direction said? Yeah. Which is gonna be interesting. I don't think it's gonna work. I think if we maybe tie a knot to hold it together like that and then and don't pull it so tight you pull through the oh the yeah don't do that so how did you do that mine is because I instead of tying it this way <laughs> <I tied> it. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out maybe how to make mine go like this there we go I think I got it you guys okay so I put mine across when I did mine I did it across and I tied it in a little like shoelace tie and then I flipped it over and I'm on the opposite end and I tied it. I'm like a lazy this. tire. I just tied it once <laughs> and put it in a bow. What the heck? <laughs> and now I'm gonna put mine in a bow. Okay, there we go. So then it ties it so we're gonna shut in theory. Yeah. So we're gonna do that for the rest of them, and then they're gonna go in the pot, like we said, with the little um, steamer, which once again, you don't want it to be in the water. The masa won't cook in the water. So you gotta make sure that you're, you have enough water to steam them, but they're not sitting in the water. And we're just, the steamer we're using in ours is like, you'd use it for like vegetables, but they also make like tamale holder basket things. So whatever you got that you can get it out of the water to steam them. And we'll put the rest of them together. Yeah, my, my personal tamale pot's about this tall and about this big around. You could make a lot of pocket tamales in that, you guys. <laughs> It makes a lot of regular tamales. <laughs> <laughs> and you could use this recipe to make regular tamales. Obviously, you would have more masa and you'd have more filling if they were full size. But put the filling in there. The tying, I think, is the funnest part. Pending they all stay shut once we start cooking them. That's going to be the part that we have to wait for. They'll stay shut. I'm confident. <laughs> now I have to remember what I did the last time and try to redo it so I can recreate it. Decorative people, non decorative people. My string people. is too short. I can't tie it in a bow. It's going to have to be a knot to hold it shut. Maybe my string won't even be long enough for that. How did you do yours so fast? I can't tie mine, the string is too short. <laughs> 
we have our tamales, they're all done. So we're gonna pull them out of our pot here. Again, 2% <laughs> rule. <laughs> and we'll open them up, they smell really good. They smell really good. When I can see cheese like oozing out of mine, you guys. It looks delicious. I'll open it up here so you guys can see the cheese oozing. This one probably had maybe just a teeny tiny bit too much cheese. No such animal. I know, really? Yeah, no such thing as too much cheese. And then we'll taste them and we'll see. They're really pretty looking with there the cilantro the and the peppers. They're really pretty. And we'll see what they taste like. It's got a good texture. The masa turned out really good. And it's got that little kick from the lime. You can kind of taste it sort of, mm -hmm. not spicy, but that little tangy. And then the peppers have a good texture. They're cooked. Well, they're not hard, which is good. At home, you can do different varieties, whatever kind of filling you want. And then, like I said, you do meat, you do different kinds of cheese, you could experiment. And you have your pocket tamales. Well, that's all the time we have today, guys. So once again, we'll have the recipe showing. It'll be on our Facebook page. And you can come back. Hopefully, we'll be having another cooking show. You can come back and watch us. So we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Goodbye.